Solvent welding, Chlorfit Schedule 80 Corzan CPVC pipe and fittings allows for the connection of plastic piping in a piping system. This fusion creates a strong chemical bond as the pipe and fitting are chemically softened by the solvent and then allowed to remesh their chemical structures. This process creates a bond which is both strong and leak tight. This video will demonstrate the recommended techniques for making high strength solvent welded joints. Key points to remember are as follows. The joining surfaces must be amply softened by the primer and made semi-fluid. Sufficient solving cement must be applied to fill the gap between the pipe and fittings. Assembly of the pipe and fitting must be made when both surfaces are still wet and solvent cement is still fluid. In cool weather, more time and additional applications or primer may be required. For full details, please refer to the installation instructions included in the Chlorfit Solvent Welding Kit. The tools required for solvent welding are as follows. Gloves, safety glasses, and personal protective equipment. Marking pens and tape measure appropriate pipe cutter or chop saw, deburring and chamfering tools, lint-free cloth, pipe stand and or pipe puller, correct size applicators for the size of the joints being solvent welded. The can opener is designed to prevent damage when loosening and tightening the lids on the primer and solvent cement cans. For Chlorfit solvent cement, the date on the bottom of the container is the date of the manufacture, not the expiration date. When stored properly, the shelf life of the material is two years. Before installation, carefully inspect each length of the pipe and fittings for damage. Run your fingertips around the pipe, feeling and looking closely for nicks, cracks, splits, dents, or other marks that could indicate the pipe has been damaged. If the pipe or fitting is damaged, discard the damaged product or cut off six inches of pipe beyond the cracked area. The pipe must be cut as square as possible. A diagonal cut reduces the bonding area and thus the strength of the joint. An easy method to ensure a straight cut is to use any flexible straight edge to mark around the pipe diameter at the appropriate length for the cut. The pipe can be cut with a wheel-tight plastic tubing cutter, power saw, chop saw, or fine tooth saw. George Fisher does not recommend the use of ratchet cutters as they may split the pipe during cutting. Remove inside diameter burrs or raised beads with an internal deburring tool or knife. Remove any burrs or raised beads on the outside diameter of the pipe. Burrs can create channels into pre-softened surfaces or can create gaps across the mating surfaces. A 10 to 22 and a half degree chamfer with a minimum width of 1 8 of an inch must be placed at the end of the pipe to ease insertion of the pipe into the fitting socket. This chamfer will minimize the chance that the edges of the pipe will wipe away the solvent cement or will scrape softened material surface from the fitting socket during the insertion of the pipe. With a clean dry rag, remove any dirt, grease, shavings, or moisture from the inside and outside of the pipe and fitting. A thorough wipe is usually sufficient. Check the pipe and the fitting for dry fit before solvent welding. For proper interference, the fitting should slip on the end of the pipe easily, but should become tight at about one-third to two-thirds of the socket depth. Measure the fitting socket depth and mark the distance on the pipe OD. Add two inches to this distance and make a second mark on the pipe OD. The first mark should be covered during the application of both primer and solvent cement. Before solvent welding the assembly, ensure that the surface can be softened suitably by the primer on a piece of scrap pipe. This can be done using a pocket knife. The primer and pipe should scratch. This means that the wall is now sufficiently softened and ready for solvent cement. If the primer did not soften the OD of the pipe, please reapply additional primer. If successful, the following solvent welding process must be completed without interruption. To begin the solvent cementing process, ensure you have the correct applicators. The applicators should be approximately half the diameter of the pipe being solvent welded. Stir or shake the solvent cement before using. Aggressively apply the primer into the fitting socket, keeping the surface and applicator wet until the surface has been softened. While using the applicator inside the fitting socket, ensure the applicator remains in constant contact with the fitting socket surface. Redip the applicator in primer as required. More applications of primer may be needed in cold weather conditions. Next, 
aggressively apply the primer to the end of the pipe to a point one half inch beyond the depth of the fitting socket. Apply another coat of primer to the socket. Do not allow the primer to run down the inside of the fitting or puddle at the bottom of the pipe. Aggressively apply a full, even layer of solvent cement to the pipe, equal to the depth of the fitting socket. Do not brush the layer out to a thin paint type layer, as this will dry too quickly. Then, aggressively apply a medium layer of solvent cement into the fitting socket. Apply a second, full, even layer of the solvent cement on the pipe. Most joint failures are caused by insufficient application of solvent cement. Immediately while the solvent cement is still wet, insert the pipe into the fitting socket with one smooth insertion action. If utilizing a pipe puller, ratchet the pipe puller until reaching the bottom of the socket. Hold the pipe and fitting together for a minimum of 30 seconds to avoid the pipe from pushing out. Using a clean, dry rag, remove the excess solvent cement from the pipe and fitting, including the ring or bead around the socket entrance. Excess solvent cement does not strengthen the joint. To ensure the pipe is fully inserted into the fitting socket, measure the distance between the second mark on the pipe and the lip of the fitting. The measurement should be two inches. Best practice includes labeling each joint with the installer's initials and date the joint was made. A table of set and cure times can be found in the installation instructions included or the Chlorfit Technical Manual. For comprehensive instructions for solvent welding in extreme conditions, please refer the installation instructions included in the solvent welding kit. For more information on the George Fisher Chlorfit system and the assembly of components, please refer to our technical manual available at www.clorfit.com. Additionally, hands-on training can be scheduled via our website, www.clorfit.com, or by contacting your local GF representative.